A little background, I, I am, I'm, I'm the surviving founding member of American NTN Manufacturing in the United States. I've uh, been, been there 47 years, so I can take some of the responsibility for some of the abuse that we've al allowed to accumulate. Uh, partly, I, I was one of the production managers, so just keep it running, I, I have to make more parts. And then people came along and, and started offering th ways to help us. And they said, we have free money. We have free labor. We're going to make you a hero. You're going to save your company millions of dollars. And, and we're going to do that for you. I was raised about 20 miles west of here. And I was taught to be suspicious of things that were free. <laughs> Stay away from strangers. Don't take candy. Don't get in their car. <laughs> and then when I was in high school, the local band made a big hit and said, I'm the friendly stranger in the black sedan. Won't you hop inside my car? I've got pictures. I've got candy. I'm a lovable man. I'm going to take you to the nearest star. And my dad said, did all this go to waste? What are you possibly thinking? And a few years ago, I started running, and I had the opportunity to assist another runner, and, and it changed my mind again. And, and we were in South Dakota, and we're running through the Black Hills, and I'm not much of a runner. I had just started, and I was overweight and out of shape and mal malnutrition and underdressed, and, and I was the only amateur there. And as the pack ran away from me and I got tired, I had my hands on my knees and my head down and said, yo, what was I possibly thinking? How is this ever going to work? And along came my friend Michelle. And she said, <laughs> Joe, is that you? And I said, yes. She goes, it's OK to be scared. I'm here to help. I know what to do. And I said, I'm just trying to catch my breath and hopefully not get lost now that I've lost the crowd. And she said, I can't believe that you spotted that lion's tail in those cat weeds. And I'm just like, what? She says, yeah, in those cattails, she, she goes, there's a mountain lion, so that she's probably sitting on her cubs. And if you raise your hands up and make claws and stand on your tippy toes, and lower your voice, we could walk right through there. And she made me demonstrate that, and off we went, like the cowardly lion, walking down the yellow path. And we got through, and she said, you should be fine from now. I'm in a different race than you are, and I have to go catch up with the pack. Have a good day. People appear when there's a need. And that's why you're here. You're looking for those people that can help you. A and whether they have experience, or they have the tools, or they have ideas, or maybe they have failures they can share. But you know, hopefully that's why we're here. And hopefully you find a solution, or hopefully your Michelle arrives to help you. After I got done with the race, I got aware of, of the laws that had, had been passed in, in the history of this and, and the fight the United States was having with the Tokyo incentive and, and how we finally made the Clean Air Act and then how that trickled down to allow, allowing the utility companies to start putting an itemized item on your bill for us so that we could start developing these coffer funds to make it available for us. And then a salesman came to my door and said, I'm the guy. I got the money. I got the free labor. I can do all this for you for free. You'll be a hero. And I said, really? What's the bottom line? He kept saying, just sign here. I said, that's fine, but that's not enough for me to go to the big guy and say, you know, I've got money for you. So the next week, the next guy came, and the next guy came, and the next guy came, and the next guy came. And seven guys later, I got a call at my desk, said, hi, you don't know me. I'm Paul the Cloud Dancer. 
and I'm standing in your lobby, and I've got free money and free labor for you, and I'm going to make you a hero. And I said, really? I says, while I'm there, think about this. You're the eighth guy in two months. Think about what you're going to tell me different. I'm going to give you five minutes. So I went to the lobby and met Paul, the cloud dancer. And he said, just sign here. Everything's going to be fine. It won't cost you a thing. And I'm like, really? Where's the fine print? And he said, I've got time. Why don't you go to accounting and get your utility bills and come right back? I'll show you the fine print. I'm like, there is fine print? He's like, yes, and I know what it is. He says, go get a utility bill. So I ran up to accounting and I came back and gave him my utility bill. He says, you see this line right here where it says energy improvement and $7,000? That's what you're donating every month. Would you like that back? He said, it's your money. He said, there will be some commitments. He says, but let me walk the plant with you and we'll look for an overall picture and see what direction we want to go in and who we need to help us. And I said, well, I've been in situations where I'm willing to take help. I just needed to change my attitude. Oop. So we took a, a walk through the plan, and we found, of course, 400 leaks, just like everybody says. And, and we found a lot of piping problems that we weren't aware of. Yeah, I, I have five different plants for a, about 800,000 square feet, so we kind of stretched down the block. And, and we have pipes running between buildings even. So we knew that there was a restriction at one point where we go to a, down to a four-inch pipe because when one compressor room was idling and we supplied more in one direction, it worked. And when we tried to do maintenance on the other side and supply going west, it didn't work so well. So we knew that that was a restriction. But they came in and they said, no, the way your compressor room is piped is you have a restriction on every machine. Take out all your 90 degree turns and put in 45s. Make some manifolds to distribute the stuff in, in between different equipment. And we'll get somebody to pay for it. Says, you, know, you have to make a commitment that if we give you the final results of these studies in printing and we tell you what to do, that we'll put you up on the hook for $15,000 and we'll try to cover the rest of it. And we'll get you a quotation on what that incentive is going to be. So we took the $15,000 commitment and Paul, the cloud dancer, said, I really want you to succeed on this. I will come on Sunday, and Joe and Paul can fix the leaks, and we can charge that $15,000 of labor and materials if we do it ourselves. So we did that to make our credit for our investment from the company. They didn't have to write a check. And on Christmas Eve at 4 PM, we shut off the compressors and cut all the piping out of the system. And my A vendor, who has now become a marathon man, said, you know, we'll go for it. And we worked through until New Year's Eve and got done at 11 AM so we could go home for the holiday. And in nine days, we completed this project. And the $96,000, we got a check issued to us for to cover. Between the leaks and the piping, we were able to stop a 300 horsepower compressor. If you figure at $40 a month per horsepower, we have a $12,000 a month gain. So it's important that you ask for help. Since then, we've gotten our A vendor qualified as a supplier for both the gas and the electric utility, partially for a selfish reason so that I can channel the rebate back to my vendor who holds the nest egg then so I can start the next project and I don't have to go through the corporate stuff. You know, I've already got money set aside that didn't come back because when it comes back to our accounting, it's spent and gone. So my energy manage 
management funds I, I try to keep with my vendor, and, and it allows us to get the next project started. Next, we moved on to chill chiller optimization. And we put in dry coolers because we're about 40 miles down the road and it gets pretty cool here during the winter. And we have a large opportunity, probably seven months, that, that we could use free cooling and just fans and radiators and stop the mechanical cooling. In, in this case, we had two 75 ton compressors running year round. To, to chill the cooling water. Additionally, we, we found that there were problems with the design. You know, we had submerged plate chillers, which once they get film on them, they don't transfer very well. And, and being submerged in a tank, they're out of sight, out of mind, and you just keep lowering the water temperature to keep up with the process. So we found some bargains on, on some chiller barrels, and, and we changed the design. It, we put the pumps on VFDs so that they can be temperature reactive and not have to run all the time. And, and we put the dry coolers on the roof. In the process, we, we ended up changing the chiller to 215 ton. We went to cycling, regenerative, very small scroll, scroll compressors. So typically we have one nine horsepower compressor running and then the others come on in stages. Learning to control the, the, the temperature, we're looking now at pulse back flushing chillers. And, and our biggest problem is, is that we use our chillers to catch up. So two shifts, we don't have maintenance there. The filter bags that are protecting the chillers plug, and, and we're actually not chilling for two shifts out of three. So in order to modify that and get back flushing, Chillers, if we have to back pulse two minutes out of every hour, you know, we're going to gain 90% of the chilling cycle and we'll reduce the load. And hopefully we'll finish programming and we'll get the dry cooler to work during the summer as well. You know, every evening that gets down to 60 degrees or maybe even 70, we could run the dry cooler rather than mechanical cooling. And we're talking about four half horsepower fans. So big opportunities throughout the plant for many things. Here's an example. You can see our, our baseline study. We, we rarely came be, below 40 amps. You know, most of the time we were close to 80. And, and our study afterwards, you know, 20 is pretty typical. You know, we, we have some hiccups where we had to catch up, but we have a huge reduction. And now I also have probably 180 tons of cooler available for other projects with, without having to make an investment other, other than installation piping. So it's the trying to open, over, overcome yourself and, and have a positive peace of mind, you know, find partners, find them inside and outside your company. You know, the auditing and data gathering, you know, we have to have our sales hat on, so, so we have to pre present a good case for what we want to do. You know, when you do your calculations with, with your vendor, try to keep a straight face. You know, some of the numbers are pretty staggering, and, and you can't believe that things got the way that they are. But like I said, some of us have to partially take credit for allowing that to happen. But you know, this is a new field, and, and you know it's it's only been eight years that you know people have been trying to help us, and it, it took a couple of years for us to accept that they they really meant it, and, and that they were looking in our best interest. <sighs> Going the wrong way. Looking throughout the plant now that we're aware of it, you know, on the right we wanted to install some metering, and, and we're separating every building so they can see what's going on. But they wanted to install it in by the old compressor room where we had now we had blind flanged for the air to come from another source, and we. 
A T has a rating of eight for restriction. And a long sweep elbow has a rating of two for restriction. Just changing this one part, our air compressors dropped 40 amperes. This has been in, in the plant since 1988. <laughs> we walk by it every day. It's a, another nightmare. I, I, I counted 1,350 degrees of turns between the compressor and when it's delivered to the plant. Going to be a large investment. We're, we're in the process of going into a new product, hopefully in two years, so we're, we're gonna leave it until then and see if the installation of that project can't pay off the change we need to make here. Uh, monitoring each of the equipment. You know, in, in this case, we, we, we're finding a half an inch uh, of pressure differential on the compressor cabinet. The manufacturer says, if you go over a quarter of an inch, you may have motor problems. 13 says he might be right. But, you know, the maintenance people don't always have good years. And, and you know, one point I changed to no loss dryers. This again was a huge savings. We, we shut off another 300 horsepower compressor. 14 months later, two weeks ago, the mechanic came to me and said, Joe, those no loss drains, which of course he would not install himself. He goes, I haven't had to do any maintenance and they're saving air. They're much better than anything we had. You must have finally done some homework. And so my next challenge, and when some of the vendors here are involved, is, is to solve this problem. And, and let's change these filters often enough that we're not replacing motors instead. Our 1700 building, our, our flagship project, we recovered 75,000 CFM of heat from our compressors that we didn't put in the initial building. And we were able to turn off all of our heat except for our, our front office. So we're supplying fresh air, we're conditioning it, and we, we have a 300 foot sock with three inch holes in it, so it's gently wiping the area. And now we have to redesign, reconfigure our exhaust so that we can wipe the whole building and, and help with the oil mist. Now, now the safety people are interested in what we're doing for compressed Air, air energy savings, our, our president is involved, and, and still looking for the vehicle to teach the people that, that you know, we're really working in their best interest and, and we're bringing partners that can work in their best interest. Here, here's the fan, you know, don't try to stand in front of it. You know. <laughs> And here's an installation. You can see on the right, the fan was installed, but we already had duct work with dual discharges, one to the roof and one to, when we built the building, we already heated a 30,000 square foot warehouse with air compressors. It doesn't have heat. And so we can discharge to the roof or into the warehouse. Totally, we have 13 compressors. We typically, consume about 11,000 CFM in, in our five different sections. So we have, like everybody else, we have way too much redundancy, but we also haven't, haven't had to have a rental in five years. So we just have to change our mind and, and change our direction and, and stay committed to, to the new direction. Here, here's the sack gently drifting the air in, except for the people who swear it's blowing on them. <laughs> this year, we went to the 1400 building, did the same thing. We're blowing it out the roof, let's blow it back into the building. We were able to turn off a 35,000 CFM makeup air and burner. You know, we may go back and, and downsize the burner and put a VFD on it and, you know, now we have everybody's interest in how many air changes can we cause in each of our buildings. 
So we have to re-engineer things. And, and I'm working with the utility companies now to try to decide how do you, what is the best marriage for water-cooled compressors or air-cooled compressors and process chilling and make up air and HVAC units and anything else you'd like to throw into the mix. And why, why can't we you know, go to college and, and get us an intern to write the software that will sort this stuff out for us and say, well, if you go this way, you know, this will be really cheap so you could do all of this right away. Or if you go this way, this will be your long-term benefit. And educate my company on how do you make a good long-term investment plan. And, and stop pushing the panic button and say, it's broke. Get me one here tomorrow and we're gonna buy the same thing we're getting rid of, and the same headache that you know, most of us aren't, weren't aware of. So it, it's about changing our mind. You know, mine are not the only methods of application. You know, we wanna learn a, and develop a long-term strategy. I believe the marriage of all of these things create more opportunities than we think just as getting more people involved with you create different opportunities, whether it's human resources or engineering or health and environmental and safety. You know, we still have the same problem Leslie talked about. You know, how are you going to get 600 people in, engaged and, and full time? But the main thing is, you know, you can do these things. You know, we try to Yesterday we were saying not to say free. I'd say it's okay. You know, it, it helps if you've completed a couple projects. But you can add free heat to your vocabulary. You know, whether you're, you're looking for your vendor or your cloud dancer or your incentives, you know, I've received over $300,000 from the utility companies in the last five years. You know, they're there to help. They, they, they're serious about this. They want you to save energy, and people like best practices want us to share those ideas and, and, and share the failures and, and share the victories. So you can do this. If you're committed and persistent, and especially if you have faith that Michelle is coming to help you. Thank you.